Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ English, your favorite UPSD platform in India. We all know that India is a land of diversity and polyculture. We have variety of religious communities as well as tribal customs and traditions, plus we also have a linguistic diversity. We have the mainstream scheduled languages, plus we have many, many more dialects across Indian society. It is a wonderful thing because it makes India very unique. But at the same time, it can also create problems for some such communities who are not getting the opportunity to participate in the mainstream society. Yes, we are talking about our tribal communities. Spread across many states in India from Madhya Pradesh to Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, right up to Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh and Northeast India, including the island territories of Lakshwadeep and Andaman. Indian tribals are a diverse community. But sometimes due to lack of integration in formal education and employment sector, they experience quite a high level of social economic backwardness. So today the Indian government has introduced artificial intelligence based tool to improve the lives and to promote the culture of these tribes. This is known as the Adi Vani app. This has been making news quite important for your UPSC GS paper 1 and 2, vulnerable communities in India and linguistic diversity of Indian society. Now the government is resorting to use of AI, that's artificial intelligence, plus machine learning and large language models to create a unique app called Adi Vani app. The purpose of this app will be to translate unique tribal languages into Hindi and English at the same time, also translate medical manuscripts, literary work, government policies and programs from Hindi and English into the tribal languages. It's a two-way tool which is introduced by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs recently. And the ministry says that we are rolling out the beta version of Adi Vani app. Not only is this based on the use of large language model but also it will be one such unique initiative under the larger policy of Janjatiya Gaurav Varsh, where we are celebrating the pride of our tribal culture diversity. We know that both schedules of our constitution, the fifth and the sixth, are devoted to tribal administration and management of tribal areas. And today, by introducing an app like this, we are just taking another step towards tribal integration in mainstream Indian society. This app will actually bridge the linguistic gap that exists between Hindi and English, which are more predominantly used languages in India, and the relatively unknown and obscure tribal languages also. It also includes a plan to create a bilingual dictionary through which awareness campaigns can be spread out to the tribal areas by translating them in their respective local dialects. So how will this app function? Well, the app will function on complete AI and digital platform. Why? Because we absolutely need something special for promoting tribal languages today. India is home to about 8.6% scheduled tribes as per the 2011 census operation, which translates roughly into 10.45 crore tribal people. With such a huge population, it makes little sense that they should not participate in formal education and job opportunities only because they have a linguistic barrier. At the same time, for the mainstream society also, it is a loss. When we are unable to understand tribal script and language, we are unable to respect and appreciate their unique contributions in art, culture, herbal medication. And therefore comes this app which will protect about 461 tribal languages along with 71 other tribal mother tongues. In India right now, 82 languages are already vulnerable because they are slowly disappearing. Plus, we have 42 languages which are critically endangered. So it is time we should protect them. So here comes the Adi Vani app, which shall be operational, officially available on the Google App Store. It will translate languages including the Bhili language, the Gond language, the Santhali language, Mundari language. Now, on that note, you should also know that which is the highest, numerically highest tribal community in India. A lot of people will answer Santhali. But in reality, it is the Bheel tribals who predominate in terms of numerical representation in India. 
Of course, Santhal is again a major group of tribes. But apart from languages like Bheli and Santhali, there are many more languages which are predominant and used among the tribals. For example, there is this language called Kui that's predominantly used in Odisha. Then we have the Garo language, very common in Meghalaya, Assam and parts of Tripura, even certain belts of Mizoram. So the government wants to promote a better translation of languages like Bhili, Gondi, Santhali, Kui and Garo because these are widespread among people of Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Rajasthan and Dadar and Nadra Haveli. Ultimately, the plan is that tribals should not stay behind when it comes to participating in formal learning and we should also have some of the other insight into the unique tribal culture. So today, the users of all these tribal languages will have the provision of getting a real-time translation, not just text but also audio through speech. They will be able to understand government policies, welfare schemes, government initiatives, the Prime Minister's Man Ki Baat and various other important news events in their own language, which means, yes, they will be politically, culturally more integrating into India. This provides an interactive language learning for students. Now, early learners among the tribal members, for example, we could talk about Odisha. Odisha is one state which is again tribally very diverse. It is also home to about 73 PBTGs, the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, which were identified long back under the Dhibar Commission. Now, these PBTGs are more on the brink of malnourishment, lack of education and informal sector jobs. To bring them out of this trap of multi-dimensional poverty, an early learning could be a smart solution. And here comes Adiwani, which will enable young children among the tribes to take up education in their own language, to understand mainstream education through translation devices like these. Digitally, it will also help us in preserving the diverse folklore, music, speeches, poetry, and culture, heritage and traditions of our tribals. So this Adiwani app will have features which include translation from text to text, text to speech, speech to speech and speech to text, which means it will provide variety of ways in which learners can learn between languages. There is another aspect to it. It's called the OCR, the Optical Character Recognition, through which the app will automatically recognize tribal letters, manuscripts, characters and primers. Bilingual dictionary will also be available for students to learn. Now, for example, the government often creates a propaganda and awareness about various kinds of vaccines, including the polio awareness campaign, including the prevention and cure of cervical cancer. Similarly, on the awareness regarding sickle cell anemia disease, which are also prevalent among the tribal women and children. So through this app, the government shall be able to propagate information in their own dialect to the tribal people. And then we can also have much better targeted tribal welfare schemes. So all in all, it looks like a wonderful plan. And on that note, I was just looking at my previous video on 5th and the 6th schedule. And I'm extremely honored by the kind of love and by the kind of participation I see from my students. But I also felt that there is a slight miss understanding among many aspirants regarding the exact difference between the tax and the ADCs. Let me bring it clear to you. When I say tax, tax are tribal advisory council. Please understand that they are enlisted under the fifth schedule of Indian constitution. They are purely meant to advise. Advise the governor of the state, a state which has tribal areas. States like Madhya Pradesh, states like Chhattisgarh, where you have a heavy tribal population. In that case, the tax or the tribal advisory councils can advise, they can make recommendations to the governor on the welfare of scheduled tribes in that area. But when we talk about the ADCs, these are autonomous district councils. They are quite more independent and powerful bodies and usually they are enlisted under the sixth schedule of the constitution. I have explained to you earlier that under the sixth schedule, we only take care of four states. The tribals of these four states, AMTM states, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizora. These are the states which have unique tribal races. They are anthropological specimens. 
also their culture is endangered so therefore they are enlisted for special protection under sixth schedule hence under the same schedule we create the adcs adcs are autonomous they are self governing bodies which have huge legislative judicial executive and financial powers they can make decisions and pass laws regarding the use of land forest laws and local markets the purpose is to give the tribes more participation in the adcs to give them more autonomy for grassroots level empowerment then comes in picture the pisa act you should also know about that that recently how the government has extended certain panchayati powers to these bodies the whole purpose is to create self empowerment among the tribals to let them be participative in their own administration so when compared yes the adcs have much greater autonomy of self governance as compared to the tac who have a more advisory role to play so i hope i was able to clear the difference let's look at the question consider the following statements regarding tribal languages in india one the constitution of india includes certain tribal languages in the eighth schedule two the santhali language spoken predominantly in jharkhand odisha and west bengal uses the old chikki script and the third the paniya language spoken by tribal group in kerala is listed in the eighth schedule which of these is or are valid it's a slightly tricky question i have posted the answer here for self checking at the same time before i take your leave i would want to remind you that tomorrow we are ending this massive sale so if you have a strong resolution for clearing upsc 2026 or 2027 then this is the right time you can enroll for the august batch not only will you get excellent coaching and guidance which is a commitment on our platform but at the same time you will also get all these in english english and hindi at a price that is quite affordable so please use the code splive on your screen and take the benefit of this sale before it ends tomorrow on that note do like share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video thank you